In this lesson, we'll continue our review of reading test seven, section one, and we're still on the fourth passage, the dual passage. And if you recall in the last video, I recommended reading each passage independently, finding the specific questions, answering those just that relate to one and then two. And at the end, that's when you do what are called the compare and the contrast, where you're answering questions that compare one and two, the similarities and differences. I just think by answering the questions independently, you really develop a much better understanding of each passage. So we are on 38, and this is the first compare and contrast passage. Both authors, so again, this is the, the dual passage on uh, de Tocqueville and Mill, would most likely agree that the changes in gender role that they describe would be what? And if you recall, de Tocqueville stated that women should be elevated, should enjoy freer rights, but not identical as men. There should be this different this difference of gender based on tradition. But Mill, she says that there shouldn't be any differences and it should just be open to based on ability. But what do they they both agree on that changes in gender role? And we can almost predict this, but again if you've read it, you can find the evidence. But in the beginning of, of one, all right, so even though de Tocqueville said that they shouldn't be identical, he does state in the beginning, I believe that social changes, which bring nearer to the same level, the father, the son, the master, and the servant, and superiors, generally speaking, will raise women and make her more equal. Not, e not identical, but more equal. So definitely he's in favor of that. And we know that Mill is, right? Mill is, is, is her whole argument is that, that they should both enjoy the same, right? And here's a good statement by Mill, just to get, understand her position. The, pro the proper sphere for all human beings is the largest and highest with which they are able to attain to what this is cannot be ascertained without complete liberty of choice here's the key phrase let every occupation be open to all without favor or discouragement to any and employments will fall into the hands of those men and women who are found by experience the most capable so she's really arguing for a pure meritocracy just completely based on merit and gender shouldn't play any role and so i you know i, I kind of took a little time to answer this question and i think just by reading it most students, if you've answered the questions independently, what would they both, to, uh, both agree on? If you look at the choices here, that they should be, it's part of a broad social shift toward greater equality. They both, you know, obviously milled it, but even de Tocqueville said that, you know, he recommended that even though that women should not be completely equal. So the answer is A here. And let's take a look at 39. These are a little bit more specific. Tocqueville in one would most likely characterize the position taken in mill as what and we all can, can kind of see where this is going but let's read 65 to 69 and then we could probably predict it so let's see 65 and this is kind of what i just read <laughs> every occupation be open all without favor discouragement to any and just based on who has the most experience to be the most capable we know that de Hokeville would not agree with that and so let's look at the choices and you don't always have to refer back and i think just by answering the questions we have a good idea from previous questions what the answer is here he would be uh, he would he would regard it as less radical about gender roles than it might initially seem again that's really not accurate persuasive no, he doesn't believe it, right? He doesn't believe that it should be equal based purely on merit. Ill-advised, but consistent with a view held by some to advocate others to advocate gender equality. Remember, he referenced the people in Europe, and he definitely would not agree, and it's not compatible either. All right, let's take a look at, we've got two more for this passage. So let's see, 40, which choice best describes the ways that the two authors conceive of the individual's proper position. And we, again, you're not gonna really need to refer back. You should have an idea what the answer is here. De Tocqueville believes that an individual's position should be defined in important ways by that of an individual's sex, right? Because he does feel that gender is a factor, while Mill believes that an individual's ability should be the determining factor. That's exactly what we just read. This is definitely the choice. And I think you don't even need to refer back Right? He does feel that women should have rights, but not the exact. Mill says it sh totally should be up to ability. All right, last question, and let's take a look at 41. Based on passage two, would Mill would most likely say that the application of the great principle of political economy, and here's the reference, to gender role has which effect? And again, we kind of know because this is a reference of passage one. Let's take a look at 38 to 39 in passage one. We, so we know she doesn't agree with this. So 38 to 39. 
So this is the end of Tocqueville's argument. The Americans have applied to the sexes the great principle of political economy which governs the manufacturers of our age by carefully dividing the duties of man from those of women in order that the great work of society may be better carried on. We know Mill doesn't agree with this, right? She doesn't believe in those divisions based on gender. And so let's take a look at the choices. So Mill would most likely say those, those divisions prevent many men and women from developing their full potential. Exactly right, because she says it should be open based strictly on ability, and that's how men and women can both fulfill their potential. So the answer is A.